Hi, everyone, and welcome to the final episode of the Meet the 2020 Company of HSRT. Um, thank you for joining us for the summer. We would have been closing this week. Um, and thank you all for tuning in for the reading of Much Ado uh, last week. It was a huge success. Um, we're going to be paying artists. We're going to be, we raised money for HSRT. Everything was fabulous. And today we have um, a 2020 company member who played Hero in the reading and was slated to be with us this summer, Bailey Seeker. Bailey, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you doing? I am great. And you are, where are you at right now? Where are you hunkered down at? Um, I'm just outside of Boston at my parents' house. Um, my husband and I are here. Excellent. Yeah. And normally you are based in New York City? In New York. Yeah, I'm in Astoria in Queens. Yep. And uh, Bailey and I are neighbors um, somewhat <laughs> um, in Queens. And um, Bailey is also a resident company member with my New York company, Titan Theater Company. So Bailey and I have uh, been working together for years and we figured... Uh, talking before that, it's been about six, seven years already, which is crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, I just looked that up today. It's been since 2013. That's nuts. Yeah. So seven. Yeah. So even more wrong math on my part. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about the great story about how you and I met in a second. But why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, like where you went to school, uh, where you're from originally, things like that. Um, so I kind of moved around a little bit when I was growing up. I'm originally from Southern California and then moved to Seattle. Um, and then I went to school, uh, for college at NYU. I was at CAP 21 when they were still a part of NYU. I was the very last class to go through that. And then, yeah, just stuck around New York ever since. And for those of you that don't know the inner politics of collegiate musical theater programs, CAP 21, when it was part of NYU, was one of the elite, if not the elite, musical theater programs in the country. So Bailey, uh, Bailey's pedigree is quite, quite strong. She wouldn't say that about herself, so I'll say it uh, for her. Um, so everybody knows you're a resident company member at Titan. So let's talk a little bit about Shakespeare. How many shows have you done with Titan? And tell us about how musical theater and now Shakespeare are a part of your life. Oh, God. okay, let's see. You did Lear. Mm -hmm. uh, Midsummer, I assistant directed you in a, in a solo with you. Mm -hmm. um, Christmas Carol three times. Yeah, you were uh, the original. You were in the original cast of Christmas Carol. I was, yeah. yeah. So I think it's been like six or seven. Yeah, it's been crazy. So, yeah. and what some people may or may not know is Bailey was part of the company that did the pull out of the hat casting Midsummer. So Bailey was part of the group that had to learn all of the roles on the show and have the audience pull those names out of a hat at random. So um, Bailey did survive that. As you can see, she is still alive <laughs> talking to me today. Um, so, but Bailey, before we get into all the HSRT stuff, um, the story of how we met is one of the greatest stories <laughs> ever written. Um, because uh, as we discussed at numerous places before, um, it is the biggest theatrical no-no for auditioning that you, that you did, and it paid off huge. So why don't you tell your side, and then I'll interject with my side. So the <laughs> auditioner and the director. So I'm on one side of the table, and you're on the other. So you go first, and then I'll interject with what, you know, my point of view is as a director. So, yeah. So uh, fire was ready. Our initial meeting was pretty nuts. Um, Lenny was directing uh, a production of Oliver, and I went into audition, and we had to do a Shakespearean monologue, and I was ready, and I sang, and then I went to do the monologue, and it was just one of those like brain fart moments where I think I got like five or six lines in, and there was nothing left. And I was like, okay, thanks so much. And I left being like, well, that sucked. Um, and then about a week later, I got a callback, which I was very confused by. Um, and it was for Bette, who is a uh, supporting character in the show. And um, so it came to callbacks. And I was a little disappointed because I'd always wanted to be Nancy. That was like my dream role since I was a kid. Um, I loved that character from watching the movie. And so I went into the audition and I did Bette and I felt good about it. But as I was leaving... Uh, I got to the door and I turned around and I was like, you know what? I 
I can't leave here unless I ask if I can sing for Nancy. So which that's where I'll hit pause. <laughs> now let's hit pause there because that's a really good place to hit pause. Now, for all you young people at home, don't ever do that. <laughs> because what it does is it makes the director really uncomfortable. And what it did is it makes it made me really uncomfortable. I was like, oh, we have so many people to see. And yet I was like, but something was like, all right, let her do it. And we'll, we'll get past this and we'll move on. Because she did have an amazing voice. She does have an amazing voice. And she was a good actor and she was probably going to be bet. Um, however, that being said, so she comes back in. And I go, all right, all right, let's sing for Nancy, going, uh, you know, talking to um, a dear friend of ours and um, who was sitting next to me at the table and who is now the production stage manager at Hope Rep and the managing director at Titan, the small world we build, huh? Um, Alyssa Van Gorder. And I was like, all right, so whoever's next, make sure they're ready to go. Um, and then, so Bailey, you go to sing and you can take over the story again. Yeah, so uh, I sang As Long As He Needs Me, and it was, like, one of the only auditions that I've ever walked out of the room and been like, yeah, that was it. Like, that, something happened there. That was, like, that was some theater magic in there. Whatever happened, like, it was just very palpable and crazy. And, what and so you said you walked, in, you walked out of the room, and then what happened? Uh, you came running out and you're like, yeah, you need to stick around and, uh, and keep going for Nancy. And I was like, okay, great. Yep. So, and then what role did you end up playing in that play? Yeah, it was Nancy. It was pretty yeah. great. Yeah, that worked out. That worked out. So, um, <laughs> while it's, you know, we, I should never say never. Um, but Bailey had the chops to back it up because if you're going to do that, you what you, I would say, and tell me if I'm wrong, Bailey, you get maybe one or two of those in your life, you know? Yeah. Or even they, even, either they say yes, and if they do say yes, that they even take you seriously. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Bailey threw down, and then that production wound up being a very, very popular production in New York. Won awards, Bailey won Rising Star. Um, you know, uh, it, was, it was a great production all around. So, great. So, that's that. Yeah. Great story. What a nice, fun antidote uh, between good friends. If you haven't, if you can't tell already, Bailey and I are very, very good friends. Um, <laughs> I was at her wedding and everything, and boy, did we have a good time. Anyway, moving on. Maybe too good at the time. So, now, HSRT. So, you haven't been, and you're one of my favorite actresses, and we're doing musicals, but the time, as we all know, timing is everything. And the time it come. So, why don't you tell everybody in Holland what you were going to do for us this summer because you weren't going to do hero you filled in when the hero um was unavailable for the reading yeah so i uh originally was going to be in wonderettes i was going to play betty jean um and i was also going to be joe and little women joe and little women the hamlet of musical theater roles yeah she's role great. That, yeah <laughs> so so your track was not a small one joe for those of you who don't know at home Joe was massive, um, and Bailey was set to do that. So that was no small task. And you have a very special connection to Joe. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, it's uh, Little Woman is one of my favorite books that I read as a kid. I remember falling in love with that character when I was, and it had to have been like seven. I mean, I was young, and I was just like, this girl, like, I wish I had that sort of, like, courage and strength to really stand up for myself. And I feel like her view of the world and her drive and passion have really helped me as I've been growing up thinking like, okay, so, you know, I just, what would Joe do? Like the young little Bailey in elementary school was like, I've got to stand up for myself and let's do this. And like, I mean, she is what a great role model for, for young women growing up. Mm -hmm. I, I just yeah. love her. Yeah. Little women is a show. Um, if you would have told me four years ago that Little Women would be on a season at Hope Rap, I would have told you no. Um, because there are seven powerful lead women. And I was sitting there, I'll never forget it, because we were about we were going to announce the 2020 season at sort of the end of 2020 or 2019. And I was like, we need to put Little Women on there because 
we have the seven that can do it. And um, one of the great crimes is that, you know, um, with everything that's going on is that Holland hasn't gotten to see the company we put together yet. So without giving anything away, um, Bailey, promise me you won't throw your script away. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so with that and all the things going on and knowing you know, you and I being so close and you and a lot of the alum being close. Um, what were you looking forward to the most? And you can, we can kind of combine two questions because you're a New York actor that jobs out. So what is it like to job out, meaning go to another city and plop down for a while and do some theater? Um, and then what were you looking forward to the most about coming to HSRT? And you can't say me, even though you probably wouldn't have, but I'm going to pretend like you would have said, because you, Lenny, but I'll pretend like you weren't. So, what were you, so what's it like to job out, and what were you looking forward to most about coming to Hope Rep? Yeah, jobbing out is one of those really, it's both wonderful and really difficult um, in an actor's life, because it's awesome you get to go explore new cities, which I was so looking forward to. I've heard nothing but wonderful things about the city and there's like the beach right there and everyone's so friendly. I've just heard wonderful stories. And it's also really hard because you're leaving home. So when you know that you are going to go to a city that really accepts you and, and starts to kind of feel like a second home, it's really, really special. And I have heard that from a lot of people. So I was really looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. um, as far as performing goes, I was so excited to play Joe. And honestly, Wonderettes is one of, I've done that show in that role before. And it was one of the most fun experiences I've ever had because everyone knows the music. People are kind of singing along and it's just so happy. Everyone's so happy watching that show. Mm -hmm. so yeah. I was just looking forward to both of them. Yeah. And it's interesting you say you played that role before because the audience's last year saw Murder for Two. Um, which is a two-hander. It's a show that's like Wonderettes where you try to find people who have done it before because it is so difficult to do in a short period of time. So last year, looking at the camera, because you don't know Paul and Ben yet, we brought Paul and Ben in because they had done it before. Bailey um, and a lot of the other members of the cast had done it before. So we could get maximum you know, talent in compressed time because that first show is so fast. Um, yeah. So you would have been doing that role again. And I know you were looking forward to it. I remember when you were doing it. So I know that you have a fun place in, in the heart, especially for that role too, right? Oh, yeah. She's, she's <laughs> awesome. Now, there is one thing I forgot. So I'm, I'm, it is our last interview of the season. So do you have a couple more minutes to stick around? Do you mind? Yeah. So let's talk about the virtual reading. I, I, normally, we end with the rapid fire. Um, you were part of the Broadway on demand that we did here in New York. And now you were mm -hmm. part of the one at hope. Um, and I think a lot of people now are really interested in how we did that. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what it's like to do zoom acting? It's, it's, I don't even know how to explain it. It's really cool. It's such, it was the best thing for this quarantine because I, and I know, most every other actor is feeling this too, just wanted to be creative again and wanted an outlet where we could do theater in some capacity. And uh, what a gift to be able to do it virtually. Um, it was a little weird. I did a couple scenes, um, for example, in Much Ado, you know, getting dumped at my wedding whilst like talking to my wall, which was a little strange. But <laughs> it's it still, I don't know, it was, it was just, it was so special to still be able to do that. And while it is not the same thing as theater, it's really not. It, it, it's nice to feel that connection with all of those people who are in the cast. Like everyone was happy being there mm -hmm. and being a part of it. And uh, as much as I wish they could be in the room, uh, it, it was as close to a substitute. Like it was just, it was still wonderful. You're exactly right. Simple. You're exactly right. It is not live theater. I cannot stress that enough. Um, but I read this beautiful article, and I wish I could quote. 
the the author, but I can't. So, but I'm still going to quote them. Um, is that these readings? They're not theater, but they're a grieving process for us. It's how we're coping with not being able to do what we do, and to you know, and to have a community like Holland and Western Michigan to not have a theater for the first time, or not have the theater running for the first time in 49 years. Every summer for 49 years, that place has been running. And to have it not be, um, we knew we had to do something. But you're right, it's not live theater, but there is something rewarding about it. For me too, the big part of it. So any outlet to be creative right now, I'm in. You know, but we cannot pretend it's live theater because of, you know, the scientific proof of heartbeats syncing up and breathing together and the experience of all being in a room. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I can't wait for the day that we get to go. And um, I can't wait for the day we can go back in under circumstances that are safe-ish. You know, like, and not like ish in, in the way that we're, that are reckless, but like, it might not be packed houses. It might be live streamed and tickets, you know, but any kind of interaction with humans is something I just long for right now. Do you feel the same way? Oh my gosh, so much. I am definitely an extrovert, so I am really missing, like, a You, an extrovert? You? I know, I know. <laughs> it's, it's new. Um, no, I miss hugging people and just spending time with friends and yeah, like you said that like syncing up of heartbeats and just uh, the the energy that you can't get from a Zoom call um, from people. It, it's I miss it so much. But however, it is really magical to feel a group like we did during uh, Much Ado, where everyone was really on the same page and was so happy to even be seeing people this way and like we're all in this yep. together and it's something that we're going to work through together in whatever way i think a grieving process is a really good way of putting it yeah and you were gwendolyn in the importance of being earnest here and then here or there and just we've been really lucky to have two companies that were just game you're right the people from much ado just game to play and have fun. I mean, Devery and Andrew with the plants. I mean, you're just like, really? I'm like, you can't teach them that. You can't direct that. I was like, grab a plant from your house and do something crazy. And there they are. And they show up, um, which is a testament to the kind of talent we get at HSRT. So, well, thank you for sharing that, Bailey. And thank you for yeah. your time today. I greatly appreciate it. Of course. This is great. Yeah. And say hi to Matt for me. Matt is her, her amazing husband. I will, I will. <laughs> so, and with all um, of our interviews, um, Bailey will be sharing her talent with us today. And what better way to close out the interview season than the way we would have closed out the summer season with you singing the big home run number from Little Women. And what number is that, Bailey? Uh, it's called Astonishing. Yeah, so everybody probably knows that. Um, so with that, thank you everybody for joining us this summer. There's going to be a ton more content coming out. Um, they just won't be regular interviews, but you'll be getting season announcements. You'll be getting special announcements, all things I can't really talk about yet. Um, only hint at secretly while I wink at Bailey through a Zoom here. Um, but uh, for now, stay home, stay safe, wear your mask, and we'll get through this and we'll be able to do theater soon. Keep that mask on. That's how we get live theater back. Um, and Kick back and relax and enjoy Bailey Seeker singing Astonishing Bailey. Thank you again for joining us. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Here you go. Can be astonished.
心。